Welcome back, fellow fact hunters, to another episode of Knowing is Winning, the only show where we make genetic engineering more fun than a DNA-themed escape room. Um, I talked about scientists using CRISPR technology to find new cancer treatments during my last um, episode, in my last video. And after that, I was asked to expand on the topic of CRISPR itself. So today, we are diving into the wild, wonderful, and occasionally weird world of CRISPR 2.0. If you thought the original CRISPR was cool, wait until you see what the sequel can do. Spoiler, it's less Jurassic Park and more Mission Impossible, but with fewer dinosaurs and more precision. Now, let's rewind a bit. Imagine you're a scientist in the early 2000s, staring at a Petri dish wishing you could just edit out the bad genes that cause disease. Back then, gene editing was like trying to fix a typo in a book using a sledgehammer. Sure, you might get the job done, but you will probably take out a few chapters in the process. Enter CRISPR case 9, the so-called genetic scissors. Suddenly, scientists could cut DNA at precise locations. It was like going from carving your name in a tree with a rock to using a laser pointer to engrave your initials on a grain of rice. CRISPR case 9 is a tool actually borrowed from bacteria. Yes, bacteria, those microscopic party animals that live everywhere, including your belly button. Bacteria use CRISPR as a defense system, like a molecular mugshot book for viruses. If a, if a virus attacks, the bacteria snip out a piece of, the, of its DNA and store it as a, you know, more or less a wanted poster. If the virus dares to come back, the bacteria recognize it and unleash the case 9 enzyme to chop it up like a sushi chef on a caffeine high. Scientists, being the clever misers that they are, borrowed this system. They realized they could guide the case 9 enzyme to cut any DNA sequence they wanted. With this, gene editing became faster, cheaper, and let's be honest, a lot cooler. Suddenly, everyone wanted to play with CRISPR. It was the fidget spinner of molecular biology. But as with all first-generation tech, CRISPR 1.0 had its quirks. It worked by um, creating double-strand breaks in DNA, which the cells would then repair. Sometimes the repair was a little, let's say, creative. Imagine trying to fix a typo in a sentence, but accidentally deleting the whole paragraph. Well, not ideal if you're editing the human genome. <laughs> Off-target effects, unintended edits were a real problem. It was like asking your dog to fetch the newspaper and getting your neighbor's slippers, your car keys, and a confused squirrel instead. Enter CRISPR 2.0. This is where the magic happens. Scientists asked, what if we could edit DNA without making these risky double-strand breaks? What if we could change just a single letter in a genetic code or swap out faulty sequence with surgical precision? Well, CRISPR 2.0 answers these questions with a resounding yes and throws in a free set of steak knives. Let's break down what makes CRISPR 2.0 such a leap forward. Well, first, um, there is so-called base editing. Instead of cutting both strands of DNA, base editors chemically convert one DNA base into another. It's like using a pencil eraser to change a single letter in a word, rather than you know, tearing out the whole page. For example, a base editor can turn a C into a T or an A into a G. The, these, you know, this seemingly small change is actually huge. Many genetic diseases are caused by single letter mutations. With base editing, we can potentially fix these at their source. 
It's like spell check for your DNA, but without the annoying red squiggles. Then there is prime editing. If base editors are pencils, prime editors are like the search and replace function in your favorite text editor. They can insert, delete, and swap out stretches of DNA, all without making double strand breaks. Imagine being able to fix not just typos, but entire sentences or paragraphs with a pinpoint accuracy. Prime editing can correct complex mutations, offering hope for diseases that were previously out of reach. It's like having a backspace key for your genetic code, finally a way to undo those evolutionary autocorrect fails. And let's not forget the high fidelity case 9 variants. Enzymes like uh, HIPA case 9 or EVO case 9 that have been fine tuned to recognize their targets with astonishing precision. These evolved proteins reduce off-target effects to less than 3% compared to about 30% for the original case 9. That's like upgrading from a dartboard to a laser-guided missile. Scientists can now edit genes with confidence knowing they are hitting the right spot. You know, no more oops, wrong gene moments. So. What does this mean for real people? Let's talk about some of the breakthroughs. In medicine, CRISPR 2.0 is opening doors that were previously locked tighter than your grandma's secret cookie recipe. Take, um, for instance, sickle cell anemia, a disease caused by a single mutation in the hemoglobin gene. With base editing, scientists have already cured patients by correcting this mutation in their stem cells. The, you know, these edited cells are then returned to the patient where they produce healthy blood for life. It's not science fiction. It's happening now. And unlike your last diet, it actually works. And it's not just sickle cell. Cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, and even some forms of blindness are now within reach. Prime editing can tackle mutations that base editors can't, offering hope for thousands of rare diseases. In cancer, CRISPR 2.0 is being used to engineer CAR T cells, as I have mentioned in, uh, in my previous video. These are immune cells that have been supercharged to hunt down and destroy tumors. With greater precision, these therapies are safer and more effective than ever before. It's like giving your immune system a GPS and a black belt in karate. But it's not just about fixing what's broken. CRISPR 2.0 is also transforming agriculture and the environment. Scientists are editing crops to resist disease, tolerate drought, and yield more food. Imagine rice that can withstand blight or wheat that grows in salty soil. These advances could help feed a growing population and reduce need for harmful pesticides. See, your salad just got a lot smarter. Now, in the fight against infectious diseases, CRISPR is being used to engineer mosquitoes that can't spread malaria or dengue. By editing the genes of these insects, scientists are reducing the spread of deadly diseases, saving lives without the need for toxic chemicals. I have talked about pluses and minuses of that in my recent video about mosquitoes and a new anti-mosquito drug, so I um, highly recommend you, you have a glance at it and watch it because I think it's, it's very uh, interesting. But anyway, of course, um, with great power comes great responsibility. The ability to edit life's code raises profound ethical questions. Should we edit the genes of embryos to prevent disease? What about enhancing intelligence or physical traits? The infamous case of the CRISPR-edited babies in China sparked global outrage and led to a prison sentence for the scientists involved. Most countries have banned germline editing in humans, at least for now, until we can ensure it's safe and fair. Remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's how we got pineapple pizza, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> but safety is also a major concern. 
Even with CRISPR 2.0's improved precision, there are still risks. Off-target effects, though reduced, haven't been eliminated entirely. Some edits can trigger the cell's P53 protein, leading to cell death or worse, cancer, promoting instability. Long-term effects are still unknown. What happens when edited genes are passed down through generations or when edited organisms interact with the ecosystem? It's like updating your phone's operating system. Sure, it fixes bugs, but sometimes it creates new ones and suddenly your flashlight app is running your calendar, for instance, right? To address these risks, scientists are developing even safer CRISPR tools. The MyCase9 enzyme, for instance, reduces off-target mutations by 90%. Base and prime editors, by avoiding double-strand breaks, minimize genomic disruption. Ethical frameworks are also evolving. Many countries have placed moratoriums on germline editing and public engagement initiatives like CRISPR-Con are bringing diverse voices into the conversation. Because if you're going to play God, we should at least have a good advisory board. Now, let's zoom in on how CRISPR 2.0 actually works inside the body. Delivery is key. Editing genes in a Petri dish is one thing. Getting the tools into the right cells in a living organism is another challenge entirely. Scientists use lipid nanoparticles, tiny fat bubbles, to package CRISPR components and deliver them to organs like the liver. Viral vectors, engineered viruses, can carry CRISPR machinery to neurons, eye cells, or muscle tissue. For immune cell therapies, electroporation uses electric pulses to open cell membranes and introduce CRISPR tools. It's like FedEx for your DNA, but with less paperwork. At once inside, base editors and prime editors go to work. In the liver targeted therapies, for example, CRISPR 2.0 can silence genes that produce toxic proteins, as in the case of, let me see if I can pronounce it right, transteritin amlodosis. I hope, you know, this was the right pronunciation. If not, uh, of course, you have subtitles, so you're welcome to, to um, read it as it should be pronounced. Anyway, infections are another frontier. Engineered, Bacteriophages, viruses that infect bacteria, can deliver CRISPR case 9 to shred the genomes of antibiotic resistant E. coli, offering hope against superbugs. It's like sending in a tiny SWAT team to bust up a bacterial crime syndicate. Neurological and genetic diseases are also in the crosshairs. Base editors can correct mutations in neurons or muscle cells, offering potential treatments for ALS. Huntington's disease, and more. RNA-targeting CRISPR systems, like Case 13, can temporarily silence disease-causing genes without altering the DNA, providing reversible options for certain conditions. It's gene editing with an undo button, finally something Microsoft Word could uh, learn from. But even the best tools have their challenges. Delivery efficiency remains a technical hurdle getting CRISPR components to the right cells in the right amounts without triggering immune responses. Some base editors can still affect non-target bases near the edit site, known as bystander edits. And of course, because CRISPR proteins are derived from bacteria, some people's immune systems may recognize and attack them, limiting their effectiveness. It's like sending a pizza delivery guy who is allergic to pizza. Despite these challenges, the progress is staggering. As of 2024, more than 84 cl clinical trials are underway, testing CRISPR 2.0 therapies for everything from lupus and cancer to HIV. The possibilities are expanding rapidly. In vivo editing, editing genes directly inside the body is moving from dream to reality. Multiplex editing, where multiple genes are edited at once, is on a horizon, and epigenetic editing, turning genes on or off without changing the DNA sequence, 
could open new frontiers in treating complex diseases. It's like having a dimmer switch for your genes. Let's not forget the broader implications. CRISPR 2.0 is not just a medical tool. It is a platform for synthetic biology, environmental engineering, and beyond. Scientists are designing microbes to clean up pollution, produce biofuels, or even manufacture pharmaceuticals. The potential to reshape ecosystems for better or worse is real. If we are not careful, we might end up with glow-in-the-dark squirrels running the night shift. But with all this promise comes a need for wisdom. Every edit is a gamble of genomes complexity, as one expert put it. The history of science is full of unintended consequences, and gene editing is no exception. We must pair innovation with rigorous oversight, ensuring that the benefits are shared widely and the risks are minimized. So, where do we go from here? The future of CRISPR is as exciting as it is uncertain. Will we see a world where genetic diseases are a thing of the past, where crops thrive in any climate and where pandemics are stopped before they start? Or will we face new ethical dilemmas, unforeseen consequences, or a widening gap between those who can afford gene editing and those who cannot? Only time and a lot of peer-reviewed studies will tell. One thing is clear. CRISPR 2.0 has transformed what's possible. It's 10 to 100 times more precise than its predecessor, enabling edits that were once unimaginable. It is safer, more versatile, and already changing lives. But it's also a tool that demands caution, humility, and a commitment to equity. Because with great editing power comes great editing responsibility. As you ponder the future of gene editing, remember that knowledge is power, but wisdom is everything. Stay curious, stay critical, and keep asking questions. Because in the age of CRISPR, knowing truly is winning. If you enjoyed this exploration of cutting edge of science, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And as always, let me know what you would like to explore next. Until then, keep seeking the facts that make you smarter, because the future is being written one base at a time. And with CRISPR 2.0, at least we can fix the typos. Thank you very much for watching.